I think Laura came here to brag about their school a little bit. Um, so I'm going to start with what I got. Um, good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone from the Chamber of Commerce, TSGC, and anyone else who had involved in putting this event together tonight. Uh, my name is Ed Romero, and I'm running for a seat on the school board of Trinidad School District Number 1. I graduated from Raton High in 1996. All you mighty minors, don't hold that against me. <laughs> uh, I became a resident of Trinidad in 1997. This is where I met my best friend and lifelong partner, Amanda Romero. We've been married for 14 years. I know that's a long time, but I live together. <laughs> Uh, Amanda is a lifelong resident of Trinidad. We are proud parents of two boys, Andreas, who is currently attending Trinidad Middle School, and Jeremiah, who is currently attending Fisher's Peak Elementary. Um, for the past 20 years, I've spent my career working in our local methane gas field. Um, I started from the bottom and moved my way up to an operations foreman. Um, I've been an operations foreman for the past four years. As an operations foreman, I have 16 direct employees, multiple third-party contractors. Um, I've been involved in bidding processes, budgeting, invoicing, purchasing, and safety of all employees. That's a, that's a big one, safety of everybody, making sure, making sure everybody goes home. Um, <coughs> lost my spot, sorry guys. Um, I have also volunteered for coaching multiple youth sports, which was fun dealing with small children. I was also active on Fisher's Peak Parent Lifehouse, Lifehouse Team, where I learned about the Leader in Youth Program, which is a program that teaches seven habits of creating a leadership program for all ages. That was also the year the school did reach Lifehouse status, which was a great accomplishment for them. Um, I've chosen to run because of the multiple challenges the school board currently faces. Um, for securing and sustaining teachers, budgeting, technology, safety, and any other issues that may arise. I'm hoping to work with the school board to come up with solutions for the children and staff. That's all I got on that. For the questions. Mr. Romero, how would you handle the request that approached by an individual interest group? Um, the way you handle requests, uh, if you're on the school board, um, you don't handle those requests because they have to go to the school board and I wouldn't have, by law, I would not be able to answer questions for them directly. Uh, everything would have to go through, through, the, through the process and it had to be in a public meeting. Mr. Romero, um, good education is delivered by teachers, and good teachers are usually the ones that, that, that stick around for a while. Um, not necessarily, but uh, the recruitment and retainment of teachers um, enhances the educational experience of students. Do you have a plan that would uh, look at recruitment and retention of uh, teachers? Oh, so that was, that was part of my top three items, securing and secure sustaining teachers. Um, so that, that's, that's really important because we're currently, we're, we don't have a lot of teachers in, in Colorado that want to teach in the first place. It's, we're, short, we're short on teachers. So the uh, plan is uh, to come up and come up with ways to show them more appreciation, to keep them um, with us um, in, I don't know, my train of thought. Um, improve morale for them, um, but we can't we can't do this without the funding. Money, money is the biggest issue right now for for our school. Um, that best grant, we definitely need that to pass to do what we want to do for teachers. That's all I got. Eli Debono, KCRT Radio. What attributes do you believe are essential for successful school board members? Um, attributes is um, being, being there on time for meetings, being part of the meetings, um, uh, doing your homework before the meetings, going through the agendas and all that before you're 
track meetings actually occur. That way you know what the topics are going to be. If you got any issues um, be, um, that need to happen before the meeting on the agenda, you can reach out to people and ask the appropriate questions so you have answers so there's no arguments in the meetings and um, they're just working with the team.
that would be a start. Mr. Sanchez, do you have a long-term, long-term vision for education in Trinidad School District Number One? Over the last few years, since my children have been since kindergarten till now, that my oldest is in um, 12th grade, uh, I've seen a lot of changes. As the whole community has seen changes in this district, um, I would like to see our district competing with. Denver schools, Colorado Springs schools, schools that have more money. Um, I would like our children to have as many opportunities as they do in the city. That's it. Okay. Between the candidates that are present tonight representing themselves here the, and their ideas, I'm very confident that we would all hit the ground running and strive to be the best board members that we can be. I'm interested in improving teacher, parent, student communication district-wide and to help our children strive for greatness. That being said, I am proud to be up here with each and every one of our candidates, whomever you vote for, whether it's me, Mr. Romero, Mr. Machoni, Mrs. Montero, I'm sure we will all work our tails off for our district and make school district number one as it is labeled. Thank you. Eli DeBron of KCRT, this is a question from the audience to uh, Mr. Romero. What is the state of technology in the school system right now, and how can you help improve that? Um, currently, the state of technology in our school, um, Fisher Street created the STEM program curr currently, and it's, uh, they're doing um, like, Engineers, um, science, technology, engineering, and math, and they're doing building robots in in their school right now. So it's something new this year, and it's exciting for them in the Fisher Street School. Uh, and also, uh, middle when, when they get to middle school, um, um, they're doing robotic robotics in that, in that school. But there's no computer classes currently that I, I'm aware of in the junior high. So that's that's the breakaway right there. Is uh, we need we need more technology in our junior high. We need the kids to learn Excel, words. Uh, that that is the future of of our students. If, if you don't know Excel, if you don't know how to do words, that stuff, you're not going to find a job. Uh, everybody in here, I'm sure, can work with with those programs. <laughs> They each answer the question? Yeah, I've got one from the audience who says, uh, on the school board, how many teachers achieve tenure in your district every year? Well, I guess that's for me. <laughs> um, as far as I, that is something that I do not know. That is unfortunately the question that I cannot answer. I am not sure. Um, I, do, I do know there's a handful of teachers that have been there that more than 10 to 15 years. And that's about all I know of. Unfortunately, I do apologize. Um, I think currently we have six tenure teachers, um, and all the rest of them are pretty new teachers. So that's that's what we're trying to retain teachers. Uh, hopefully, we can come up with ways to retain teachers. Uh, if we don't have these teachers um, with our students a lot, there's no way for them to to grow in our district and have have awareness of how to teach our kids. They don't stay with them. Uh, Bill, from the uh, World Journal, uh, for both members, uh, candidates here, what are your plans for future purchases of math and textbooks, uh, science textbooks? Well, right now, right now I'm aware that the, like uh, Pat had said, that the Fisher Speak does have the U STEM uh, classroom and just to piggyback off that, I, I do believe that Eckhart is getting a STEM classroom as well. Um, as far as science textbooks, I believe that's current right now. Um, the middle school is in need of science textbooks as far as anything that's need to be, that needs to be updated. Um, right now, the high school does some concurrent enrollment as far as sending them to TSJC for science classes. So. That would be something we'd like to look into in the future as well. Uh, 
Um, currently, textbook-wise, um, there, there are grants and everything that pay for that uh, for our textbooks, but um, hopefully, eventually, we get away from paper and pencil and we go to computers. Uh, why do we need to waste paper? Why do we need to do stuff like that when we have computers and we have been, if you guys pass this best grant, this B4, we'll have smart classrooms. Teachers will be teachers will be teaching off of a screen. They'll be right on the screen with the stencil, and it'll co show up on the kids' laptops. It, it'll be pretty awesome, and we need that here. So please vote B4. <laughs> have I said that a lot? <laughs> You had one KCRT for Mr. Sanchez. How do you, what are your thoughts about uh, implementing more trade programs into the district? Um, as of right now, I do know that the high school does uh, have the auto mechanics program and the woodwork workshop program. Um, I was asked this question before. Uh, I would like to actually see uh, Churchill High School get some kind of a STEM program as well. Right now, they do not have a grant for that. That is available for the high school at this point. Um, they also, would, uh, I would like to see them possibly get uh, maybe some kind of a, uh, I know back in the early 90s, they used to have their own printing press program. Uh, that would be something that would be good for children as well, as well as a machine shop program that I believe has not been there for the last five to six years. Same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the audience is, what is the state of arts education in our schools and what would be your plan for the future? Can you just repeat that, sorry. What, what is the state of art education in our schools and what would be your plan for that in the future? Arts education? Mm -hmm. um, currently, the arts, arts education, I don't, I'm not, I don't think they have arts in our school district, but I know, I think the high school does, but I know lower grades don't. So maybe that's something we took into is how we could create an arts program. I know the city, the city, city council and everybody's be talking about arts and the district of arts and really pushing arts here in our community. So uh, maybe we'll look into something like that. Uh, I do know that Trinidad High School did just recently get a uh, good, very good art teacher. Um, as far as the other schools, I, I do believe the middle school does have an art teacher. Um, the last I knew they did. Um, my kids haven't been there for a year, so I'm not sure whether they changed or if it was last year. Um, but I do, I do know my children did take art class in middle school. Um, I believe art is used daily within a a daily classroom from K through fifth grade, even though they don't have a specific art teacher. For either candidate, Eli Bono, KCRT, it's from the audience. Does Trinidad need a new high school? Is $15 million enough to build a new school? Um, so $15 million is not enough to build a new school. Uh, to build a new school, it's going to be about $45 million to $50 million. Uh, $15 million is enough to do some repairs, like, uh, like what they're saying on their best grant. Uh, I did go through the best grant, looked at all, all the itemized items. Um, um, Mr. Weston was helpful with us, and he did set, did set us his best grant so we could go over it and all that, and I did go over it. So $15 million is just what they are saying. And if, we, if I do get elected, I said we, so um, so if I do get elected, I will look in. I will look into what we're spending. I will be responsible for that fifteen million dollars. So thanks. And I just want to piggyback on that. Uh, if the best grant we got approved last year, we would actually save two million dollars. It would have been thirteen million rather than the fifteen that we're having to do this year. <laughs> <laughs>